hey guys welcome back to another video with yana empowers in today's video we will be discussing population settlement and distribution now there are other aspects to population but specifically for this video we're just doing settlement and distribution before we get into it please remember to like share and subscribe to your girl if you want to see more geography videos we are on the road to 500 subscribers we are about 95 subscribers short of 500 and you know i want to see us at 500 subscribers by the end of february so please help me to attain that goal i would really appreciate it share with your friends your family members even if they don't like geography just ask them to subscribe to just support your girl all right now let's get into it now if we're going to talk about population settlement and distribution it is first important that we describe what a population is now simply put a population is a total number of persons inhabiting a country a city or any district or area so it's the amount of persons that are located in any area so a country in the world in your community in your scheme in your household it's all population now a very important theme or category that we should highlight when we're talking about population is population distribution now simply put population distribution is the spread of people across the world so it's where people live so do more persons live in the south do more persons live in the north do more persons live in the east or closer to hill hilly areas why can't i say it words hilly areas to the rivers you know so on and so forth so it's the spread of people and where they live now i have a little example here it says paul has 10 mangoes now he gave and one mary three john four and keeps the remaining two for himself now please do not mind that full stop after three it should be it should be a comma that was an error please don't overlook that now i said paul distributed these mangoes it can be termed mango distribution now that's not a term that we hear all the time mango distribution but i'm trying to link it to population distribution now he had 10 mangoes right how he gave the mangoes to his friends we're going to assume that these are his friends is distribution now was it an equal distribution no because Anne had one mary three john four and he had two so it was an odd distribution and we see that john has more than mary mary has more than Anne, and john and mary has more than paul himself whose you know mangoes were his but this leaves you to ask questions like why did he give mary three why did he give john four maybe john is his best friend so there are different factors to how he would distribute the mangoes maybe john loves mangoes and and doesn't really she just wants one for her mom so this is definitely something that we are going to dive in further down in the video population distribution it's simply how persons are scattered how persons are located where persons live this is distribution so just like paul handing out his mangoes persons live all over different locations it's not an even distribution when we're talking about population distribution varies so we have more persons living in one area versus another area for different reasons now we can't talk about distribution and we don't talk about density now population density is a measurement of the number of people living in an area so while distribution is where people live density goes into more numbers it's how many people or how many persons are living in an area now density is usually an average number and usually when we're finding average you know some division has to go on but what we're dividing here is the number of people by the area so the amount the amount of people that are living in this area by the area the total area of the place right so the maths you know area perimeter so on and so forth yeah now population density is usually shown as the number of people per square kilometers so do we have 35 people living per square kilometers do we have 
50 people living more in sorry 50 people living per square kilometer and we have 35 we have 50 so what does that show you that maybe the per the area with 50 people per square kilometer is a bit more populated for sure than the area with 35 persons per square kilometer so it gives you some information that you can work with we are definitely going to touch on population density a bit more down in the vid now another point that we want to define is census now a census is an official survey of the population of a country and it is carried out in order to find out how many people live there and to obtain details like you know what are people's ages what are their jobs do they have dependents um you know different questions that the country needs so we always want to know how many persons or how many people are living in a country so then we can know is this country underpopulated is it overpopulated so we can answer some questions now jamaica has a long history of census taking it currently holds a census every 10 years so it's not every five years there is a decade between when censuses are held now the last census took place in july 2011 and it shows that there is a total of 2,697,983 people living in Jamaica. Now, from the census, persons can make predictions. So, in 2014, there's an estimate that there's going to be 2.72 million persons living in Jamaica. While estimates for 26, 2016, sorry, is around 2.9 million. So I have a question for you. When do you think the next census will be held? There was a census in July 2011, and it says that a census is held every 10 years. So comment below when you think the next census will take place. All right, now we're going into maps. So first, we're talking about the dot map. Now, a dot map is a map that is used to illustrate geographic densities and distributions of a population. Now, one dot can have, you know, many values depending on the key. In this case, for example, it says one dot can equal to 5,000 people, maybe it can equal to 500 people or 200 persons, so on. We just have to look at the key. So the left of our map, of our slide, um, sorry, we have a dot map and we are going to go into further detail on a dot, dot map, but let's just talk a little bit about it now. So if we look at the map, we see some dots, of course, some larger than others. And there is a key to show you how many persons each dot represents. Now I'm going to leave you with some questions. So look at the map, understand the key. How many people does each type of dot represent? Also, where do you see most dots located? Do we see they lo they're located centrally to the east, to the south, to the north, to the west? You know, where do we find most dots? Where do we find least dots? Also, what else is on the map? We see dots, but what else do we see? And if we see something else, do they have anything to do with the placement of the dots? So think about it. You can comment below your answers and then we'll see if it match up to what I have further down in the vid. Now, the next map that we're going to define is the chloropleth map. Now, this shows interval data. So this is data that is linked so on a map it will just speak on this type of data alone it won't be anything else because it has to be linked for the chloroplet map now usually different well sorry usually the data is shown as colors now they are shaded using one color where darker shades represent higher numbers lighter shades represent lower numbers now a chloropleth map needs a key to explain what the different shades mean now we have a map right that shows population density in 2017 and it says the number of people per kilometers 
squared of land area and it is a map of the world so it's showing us the population density of different countries in the world now the first one is just the map showing you how it is so it has a scale at the bottom and we can see here that the shade is green so we have a light kind of white going up building up to a dark green so where our light kind of white shade is it's zero to zero to 10 persons living there per square kilometer and it goes up to the darker green where there is greater than 800 persons living per, per square kilometers now i high <laughs> I don't know what's up with me today i'm very excited about the topic it seems but i highlighted three countries and i highlighted three different shades of green it was an interactive map so when you put your cursor over a over a country um you could see the population density so the first country that i have here is the united states and let's just identify the color so the color range it's kind of highlighted in black is between 25 to 50 people per kilometer squared now specifically when i put the cursor over the united states it gave me 36 people per kilometer squared of land area so there are 36 people living per square kilometer in that area now i went ahead and i put my cursor over a different shade of green different country and i did tanzania now if you look down at the key or on the scale you will see that that green is between 500 to 100 persons living per square kilometer now specifically for tanzania there were 65 people living there per square kilometer now let's just go back up to the united states where there were 36 people and in tanzania is 65 people that's a difference of how much mm. so there we are able to draw inferences from the data we can now say tanzania is a bit more populated than the united states right based on population density however we have to take other things into consideration like the size of tanzania compared to united states maybe because of the size there has to be 65 people who knows you know there are lots of things to take into consideration however it does allow you to make inferences about the country now finally i decided to put my cursor over the darkest green that i saw on the map and that was india and if we look on our key slash scale um the dark green represents 400 to 8 to greater than 800 persons living in an area per kilometer squared specifically for india there are 400 400 and 50 people per kilometer square of land area all right so what does that tell you if there are 36 in the united states mm -hmm. i'll go to 65 at tanzania We're like, okay that's not bad then we move from 65 to 450 people living per kilometer squared so right there and then even though there are many things to take into consideration we can see or we can assume that india is very heavily populated there are a lot of persons in a kilometer squared compared to the united states or tanzania and in all truth and fact 450 persons per kilometer squared is a lot of people in a area all right so in a kilometer squared that is a lot of people located there so it then allows you to infer that okay maybe india is a bit overpopulated so that is how 
we interpret it, interpret, sorry, to reflect maps and to understand population density. Now, the next term that we're going to define is the location of a settlement. It's not really a term, but it's something that we want to understand. Now, when describing the location of, a, location of a settlement, we have to bear two things in mind. The site of the settlement and the situation of the settlement. So, these two S's, S and S, right? Now, the site of a settlement is the actual land that the settlement is built upon. However, the situation of the settlement is things that are in relation to it or things that are around it. Now, some side factors include whether an area is protected by mountains. So, is this location at the foot of a mountain? Is this area located at the foot of a mountain? Where is this settlement built upon? At the foot of, of Stony Mountain? Or is there a natural harbor present? So, is the settlement located where a harbor is? Is there a river there? Is the location located at a river or a lake? However, on the other side, factors included in an area situation include access accessibility sorry, of the location. So depending on where the settlement is located, is it accessible to other persons? Can different modes of transportation be taken to reach this location? So it's what's around it. Are there a lot of hills? Um, is it very steep? So on and so forth. So is it accessible? Can machines go there? Can Do we have to just use manual labor? Also another factor is the extent of a place's connection with another. How far am I from Tegreg Hill? So if I'm located at Stony Hill, how far am I from Tegreg Hill? Am I 40 minutes away, 50 minutes away, um, 30 minutes away? So am I close to or am I far from Tegret Hill? Am I close to or am I far from the market? Am I close to far from the beach? What is around me? Is a beach around me? Is a beach close by? There are certain things, you know, close by. And another factor is how close an area may be to raw materials if they are not located specifically at the site. So if I'm not located at a river, how far am I from a river to get water? How far am I from water? How far am I from food? Do we have apple trees, orange trees surrounding me? Do we have bauxite surrounding me? Like what is around me? what is close to me these are the settlements situation versus the site if my house is or my settlement is located at a apple tree that's different from being surrounded by apple trees all right so it's totally different so we have to understand what's a site the difference between site and situation to determine the location of a settlement okay now let's talk about jamaica's population distribution now before we do that it is important to know that all statistical data in jamaica is collected by what we call statin which is the statistical institute of jamaica they are responsible for handing not handing but taking care of censuses doing surveys finding about all the statistical information that we need to know about our country now I have a chart here and it is the end of year population by parish and we're going to discuss this and we're going to go into some details so I'm going to spend some time I'm going to look at this table right here all right so let's start with the year 2013 and then we're going to do 2016 and then we're going to do 2018 so we're going to leave out 2014 2015 and 2017 for now so starting with 2013 kingston and saint andrew we had 667,609 persons living in kingston kingston and saint andrew 
in St. Thomas, we had 94,633 persons. All right, so there we're going to do a little comparison. So right there, we see that Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Andrew, sorry, has more persons than St. Thomas. Then we have Portland with 82,377 persons. So St. Thomas has more persons than Portland. Then we have St. Mary with 114,496 persons. So we see that following Kingston and St. Andrew, we have St. Mary. Then St. Anne, we have 173 persons, 600, 173,640, sorry, persons remaining in St. Anne. So right here, we're seeing that Kingston and St. Andrew is a bit populated because we know that St. Anne is our largest parish. However, Kingston and St. Andrew has more persons than St. Anne. So that is saying a lot. It is therefore leaning one to assume that Kingston and St. Andrew is a bit overpopulated. Um, as I said before, there's, other, there's things to bear in mind. So what I realized was St. Anne is larger than Kingston and St. Andrew. However, Kingston and St. Andrew has a lot of persons. Um, then we have Trelawney with 75,000. So that's a lot of persons in Trelawney. St. James, 185,097. Hanover, 70,000 persons. And I think that is the least amount that we're seeing so far. Westmoreland, 145,000. Manchester, 191,000. St. Elizabeth, 151,000. Um, Clarendon 246,000, St. Catherine 590,000. So, St. Catherine has the second largest population in well, it had the largest, the second largest amount of persons living there. Um, followed, sorry, following Kingston and St. Andrew. So, Kingston and St. Andrew had the largest population. Now, let's go to all right, so let's start going through 2016. So we're seeing about a 3,000 more increase in Kingston and St. Andrew. So it is still the leading in the population, um, followed by St. Catherine, which is about a 2,000 more increase or 1,000 plus increase. So we're still seeing Kingston and St. Andrew in the lead. Um, I should highlight that Kingston and St. Andrew the area for this parish is 480 kilometers squared, while the area for St. Anne is 100, sorry, 1,213 kilometers squared. So St. Anne is by far larger than Kingston and St. Andrew. However, Kingston and St. Andrew has a larger population. And there are many reasons for this, which we will highlight in another video. All right, so that's 2016. Now we have 2018 and we're seeing yeah, there's a growth of about probably 3,000, um, no sorry there's a decrease. Hmm. So in 2016, 670,000, 670,000. However, in 2018, there's a decrease of 669,000. So there's a little decrease going on there. Hmm. There's a lot to think about. And then in St. Catherine, we have a, a, a little decrease going on there as well in the hundreds. Hmm. So there is still growth for some parishes, but the growth is not great. And some parishes are seeing a little decrease, not a big decrease, it's a little decrease. Hmm. That's a lot to think about. Alright, so that's just highlighting some populations. You can go through it on your own. Don't mind when I'm going through it. Please, you know, have a look at Statin's website. Look at some different statistical, statistical sorry, data that is there. And you just go through it and make your own inferences. Okay. I have a question at the bottom though. Can you construct a bar graph showing the data of each parish for 2018? Just for 2018, I want you to construct a bar graph. Send it to my email 
uh, my email is yanlaemporis at gmail.com show me what you have and then I'll just you know kind of mark it and respond to your email so do it on a, pic- um, a piece of paper send a picture to me or use Microsoft Word construct a graph and send it to me so I want to see a bar graph with the data from 2018 for the population of each parish all right now let's move on and we will be speaking on factors that influence population distribution and location of sediment now there are several factors which affect population distribution and these factors can be applied to jamaica and they include the following so the first the factor that we'll be speaking about is relief now steep slopes are generally less densely populated than gently sloping or flat areas which we can say it's because steep slopes are very inaccessible it's very hard to you know travel on steep slopes or to even have sites build on steep slopes it's very hard to build a settlement there because of its you know it's prone to erosion and so on and so forth so very unstable versus gently sloping or flat areas where it's easy to build and construct it is accessible it's close to road channels communication channels so on and so forth so persons would more likely to build there now the photo below shows a section of the town of Sophia in St. Lucia and it says notice that most of the buildings are located in the flatter areas. There are very few buildings in the steeper areas. Now the thing with hills are that they are not as steep. They are a bit gently sloping. That's some hills of course. But they are a bit gently sloping. So persons lo- are located on hills versus mountains where you know location is sparse settlements is, are sparse in the picture here we see we have the mountains behind of where the location the settlements sorry are so we see that settlements are at the foot of the mountain and you know there's a few settlements that like you know kind of right there at the the border of the mountain but then we don't see any more settlements going further up as elevation increases and this is because it can be inaccessible especially if there aren't any roads there and it's so much easier to live on the flat all right another factor is drainage all and right so drainage soils. and soils now infertile or poorly drained soils are usually less densely populated than well drained or fertile areas well, we can say that when soil is infertile or poorly drained, you know, what use is it really? Because you can't plant crops, um, you can't even grow a proper tree because soil is infertile. And then if there is poor drainage, then if there is a flood or if there is heavy rain, we expect a lot of water building up in that area for a good while you know until it eventually drains off but it won't be efficiently so that's nowhere that someone would like to live someone or persons or community or settlements would like to live where they can plant crops and where we know that if there's rain or if there's flooding water will drain off efficiently now it says throughout much of history the nile delta in the north of africa has been more densely populated than the surrounding area and this is because delta has great fertile areas and it is well drained um the fertility of the soil in the area has allowed it to support a very large population so it's very very fertile because of all the things you know if we're going to deltas you'll understand why deltas are very very fertile um won't speak on it now because it is definitely content for another video but this is a picture showing the nile delta and we can see where other person other areas sorry are very dry and the delta is so green oh my gosh can you imagine around in surrounding the delta so the situation of the delta is very dry but the site of the location the site at the delta is green fertile all right so we're just utilizing you know some location terms 
all right so our next factor is climate and it says parts of the world where the climate is very harsh are generally less densely populated than areas with a favorable climate and if the climate is harsh why would i live there you know if i'm expecting to every night my hands are freezing off or every night i um, i feel threatened by he by <laughs> oh i'm so passionate i feel threatened by a heat stroke or i feel like i'm going to faint oh it's hot why would i want to live there i would not want to live where there's extreme coldness or where there's extreme heat i would like an in between i would like to feel cool i'd also like to feel warm but i don't want to feel hot and i don't want to feel cold right so for instance antarctica is so cold and inhospitable that no one lives there the people who go there are usually scientists who want to conduct research there and they have to build very very insulated areas to keep warm so there's a picture of antarctica and they're saying oh i want to live in the cold okay visit somewhere for the winter but don't expect to be in antarctica and feel cold and think that's cool you know you might not even live to stay there for a couple months because it's that harsh is mineral deposits so areas which have large deposits of minerals such as bauxite tend to have a high population density for example in jamaica um there's a relatively high population density near some bauxite mining areas some relatively large settlements such as maypen and mandeville are located near bauxite mining areas where you know it's easy for bauxite um, mining factor is transport and communication now highly developed means of air road and water transport add to the density of a population in a particular region because if people are able to move about as quickly and often as they desire they would be living there so think about it if you had the choice to live for example in the mountains where there is only one road that is so far away from the city versus somewhere where you have many means of getting to the city so there are many roads there are many options for you to take any route that you want where would you want to live you know i would definitely choose the one with many routes many options um because it's easy accessible i can move to where i want to. Okay, finally we are going to talk about interpreting dot maps Woo! we're at the end now that we have highlighted the various factors of distribution let's interpret the dot maps so remember i left you with some questions earlier let's answer them now so the first question was to identify the key what were we seeing from the key what did they mean so if we're looking at the key here we have 200 inhabitants for the smaller dot and the bigger dot means 1000 inhabitants where are most of the dots located well from what i'm seeing most of the dots are located in the center of the map where there is a intersection of two roads which answers another question with what are other things that we are seeing on the map so we're seeing roads and we're seeing a river with some subsequent streams now another question that i asked was does what we're seeing on the map other than the dots influence the placement of the dots and the truth is they do if you look back at one of our factors which was transport and communication it says that highly developed means of air road in this case road and water transport add to the density of population in a region and it says that if people are able to move about as quickly and often as they desire they will be living to live they will be willing sorry to live in certain areas so if we're at the intersection of roads that's more than one road we're able to move about as quickly and is as efficiently as we desire so we can move from point a to point b and usually roads mean there is access to public transportation so it's not hard to get public transportation it's not hard to move about now where we see less population is to 
the what's that no i think that is our south east um if you need to check with cardinal points i have a video about cardinal points it will be in the description below you can check that out but to the south east um we see just what 400 persons living there and it's close to a river and we don't see a lot of persons living there because in truth and in fact it's not accessible and even though there's access to a river maybe you know that's not really the main focus that's why we don't have a lot of persons living there and we see round and about to the northwest uh we see 1000 let's call it about two two thousand plus persons living there and the truth is it, it's accessible because there's access to a road which can you know carry about wherever wherever um but there's access to a road so we see some locations there some settlements sorry located there if we go down on to the southwest of the map um around the southwest i should say we see 200 400 600 persons approximately 600 persons living right there and the truth is that isn't all that accessible right it isn't all that accessible it's not even that close to the river um it's a good distance away from our communication line so there is not a lot of easy access right there so that's basically how you interpret dot maps so just look at where the dots are located look at what is surrounding the dots so we can assume or identify factors to why they are located there so in this case the factor is mainly communication and road channels now the second map that store right is similar into the way it's constructed but the difference is the key so instead of having two dots one representing a thousand and another 200 we have one um key and it's one dot representing 500 inhabitants and it equates to the same number of um inhabitants that we're seeing in the first map but it's just so new that a dot map can differ um there are also different types of dot maps with different colors so on and so forth but from you understand the basics of how to interpret a simple dot map you can definitely interpret a more complex dot map all right so that is the end of our video please comment below and tell me what you learned what's something new and exciting that you learned in today's video also remember send me that picture of the bar graph and also answer when you think another census will be held i'm looking out for those answers in the comments so i can respond to them i really enjoy making these videos and i'm really glad that you guys enjoy these videos um, i'm still thinking about a name to call you guys um it's still in the process if we are at 500 subscribers by the end of february i'll definitely have a name for you guys all right thank you so much Please so remember that a well-educated mind will always have more questions than answers. It's always good to have questions. It's always good to have questions. No one has the answer for every single thing, but a right and a well-educated mind will have a lot of questions. Helen Keller, big up yourself. Thank you so much. Big up yourself, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.